Friday is over at Budapest and the fastest driver of the day was for once not Max Verstappen but Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari and thanks to a washout in FP1 we got to see a lot of running in FP2 with drivers having to do two hours worth of practice condensed into one hour session. But the question is what did we learn? Well today I'm going to be taking a look at the data and do a data analysis of Friday practice. Now let's get into the video. As usual I'll be talking about Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull a little bit later on so stick around for that. Friday in Budapest saw FP1 being a washout which meant that teams only had one hour's worth of practice today which meant that we got to see the teams doing completely different run plans in FP2 which does make things a little bit more tricky to look into. There was not as many upgrades this weekend as there was last time out in Silverstone but there were minor changes brought to the majority of teams as they were looking to maximise their current packages. But the question is what teams were looking good and what teams were not looking so good. Well thanks to the free practice session being all over the place like I said it was actually pretty difficult to tell who looks good and who doesn't but one team that does look like they may be struggling a little bit this weekend once again is the Haas team. Over one lap as usual Haas looks pretty strong as we've become somewhat used to however once again as usual when it comes to their long run pace the pace absolutely falls off a cliff. To show what I mean here is the fastest lap of both Fernando Alonso and the Aston Martin to Nico Hulkenberg and rather surprisingly Hulkenberg actually went faster in FP2 than Alonso managed to do which once again goes to show the one lap pace of the Haas it is actually pretty strong however as soon as we stick fuel into the car you can see this is where the struggles begin for them to show this I have the lap times of Hulkenberg Albon and Bottas. I've included all of the lap times in practice as there are a lot that fall below the 107% of the fastest lap times. But doing this, we can see more of the practice laps and what does it show? Well, what it shows is that the Haas pace around this section that is highlighted diverges from Albon and Bottas, showing once again it seems like Hulkenberg and the Haas team could be struggling with tyre wear and due to Budapest having a step softer tyres this year versus last year we might really see them struggle in the race. I do anticipate Haas though will have a great qualifying in Q1 and Q2 as they light the tyres up quickly but in the race itself they will be struggling. However one thing that works for them is Budapest can be pretty tricky to overtake on and they have good straight line speed as this shows when we see who is strong or where. Daniel Ricciardo made his highly anticipated return to F1 this weekend as he replaced a struggling Dutch driver. No, not Max Verstappen, but Nick de Vries. But the question is, how did Daniel actually get on on his first Friday practice session of 2023 as a full-time driver? Well, honestly, he did pretty respectfully. It is hard to judge how Ricardo will get on this weekend. He could have done with FP1 not being a bit of a washout to get used to the car, but nevertheless, we're going to compare how he got on against his teammate Yuki Tsunoda. Let's start by looking at their fastest laps to see what we can learn. What should be rather unsurprising is that Sonoda was the faster of the two drivers. This was of course Ricardo's first full day in the car after all. Through the first part of the lap and through the fast left hander, Ricardo is actually faster than Sonoda. However, when the laps gets on and it gets a little bit more technical after the chicane, Sonoda starts to pull away from Ricardo and is significantly faster through this section, which kind of makes sense since he's had a lot more time to get comfortable with the car. For Ricardo though, his first day back has been good and it is something for him to build from. When we take a look at their long runs, Ricardo was actually faster, however he was slightly less consistent than Sonoda and was slower overall when you consider all of their lap times. It will be interesting to see how Ricardo progresses after an interesting first day back at the track. Two midfield teams that are looking fairly strong this weekend are McLaren and Alpine. Alpine this weekend have brought upgrades to their car and McLaren are looking to build on a very strong British Grand Prix and so far they are both looking very good. When you compare the fastest lap of Gasly and Norris you can see there was very little to tell between the two drivers. When the speed was getting close to VMAX and towards the end of the lap you can see that Alpine is actually a little bit faster than McLaren. However Norris makes up all of his time in the very tight and twisty sections of Sector 2, 
due to him being able to carry a lot more speed through the corners, which you could kind of expect based on what we saw last time out at Silverstone. This means that overall, over the course of a lap time, there is very little to tell between the two teams, and it will come down to who can get it right in qualifying, and with Budapest being a tricky circuit for overtaking, it will be interesting to see who can get it right. Over a race run during practice also, you can see that these times between the two drivers is very, very close, and this could be an incredible fight between the two teams, as they battle for the top midfield team, and maybe, just maybe, they can take the fight to Aston Martin, Mercedes and Ferrari, if they can nail their setups as well. If you're enjoying the video, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 3k subs, and I would greatly appreciate it if you can help me get there. Now, let's get back to the video, and let's talk about the top four teams, and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, Friday in Budapest was a bit of a mixed bag in my opinion. Leclerc was the fastest driver of the day, and set a 117.686, and was a lot faster than his teammate signs. When you compare the fastest laps, you can see where Leclerc was faster. During the fastest lap of both, you can see that Leclerc was much faster through turn 4 into turn 5. And then into many of the braking zones, you can see that Leclerc is able to brake later than his teammate, showing that he has more confidence on the brakes compared to Sainz so far. He also carries more speed into the corners, which means he is a lot faster in a lot of areas. So why was it a mixed bag? Well, firstly, Sainz did crash in a wet FP1 session. And also, when you look at their long run pace... Ferrari are on softs and Norris in the McLaren is on mediums and what can we see? Well, what we can see is that the soft tyres on the Ferrari only last a couple of laps before the pace starts to drop and then they end up being slower than the McLarens. There is still changes Ferrari can make to the setup so that they can have better pace over longer runs but they do need to be very wary of potential tyre wear being very high for them especially because the tyres are a step softer than last year. For Aston Martin, Friday did not look particularly strong when you look at their one lap pace, which you can see when we compare Alonso to Leclerc. It seems they just don't have the overall pace when compared to the Scuderia, as we come to expect now. However, when you take a look at their longer run between Leclerc and Alonso, it paints a picture that Ferrari fans may want to look away from. Not only was Ferrari struggling with Norris, but also Alonso was able to be consistently faster on the step harder tyres. This is the type of circuit that should suit Aston Martin nicely, especially when it comes to race trim and tyre wear is set to be very high, which should suit Aston Martin as well. The question is, can they nail qualifying so they are not starting too far back? Because if they are starting further back, then they will find it tricky being able to overtake versus cars that are faster than them down the straight. But if they are starting quite high up, then Aston Martin could have a very good Grand Prix. For Mercedes, it looks like it will be another long night in the simulator for Mick Schumacher as he tries to tweak the setup so that they can find some pace. Last time at Silverstone, Mercedes looked to struggle over one lap, but over a race stint, they did look strong. However, so far this weekend, they don't look particularly strong over a stint, and to show that, I have the overall laps of Hamilton and Alonso, and what can we see? Well, it is tricky to tell between both teams as they are very similar colours, however, what we can see is that Hamilton is consistently slower than Alonso over a stint. Luckily for them though, they do look to have very similar tyre wear to Alonso in the Aston Martin, as their lap times start to drop at the same time. But the pace right now is not there for Mercedes, and they look like they could be slower than both Aston Martin and Ferrari, which could potentially put them in the same realm as McLaren and Alpine over a race stint, and Mercedes need to improve from that position if they are to score some good points this weekend. For Red Bull, on the face of it, this was the worst day so far in 2023 for them as a team, as both Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez occupied the second half of the grid. However, I would not read anything into that, other than both Max and Perez did not go for fast laps in the same way that the competition may have done. Verstappen only did runs on the soft tyre, so let's compare the overall laps of Leclerc and Verstappen on soft tyres to see what we can maybe learn. 
Rather surprisingly, on the first couple of laps of the long run, it looks like Ferrari actually has the pace over Red Bull, but as we are all used to seeing in 2023, as the stint wears on, Ferrari's pace starts to fade, where Verstappen in the Red Bull is able to maintain that ferocious pace. However, neither Red Bull or Ferrari really did enough laps today for us to be able to read too much into their times. But what I can say from seeing this, there is a lot more pace in the Red Bull locker that we didn't get to see today. And we also need to see what Sergio Perez can do after he has had a very difficult Friday crashing in FP1 and seemingly not having much pace in FP2. So what did we learn in practice? Has looked to be really struggling on race pace yet again. Alpine and McLaren are very close and can take the fight to Mercedes and potentially Ferrari over a race stint. Aston Martin have potentially very decent race pace, but they may struggle over one lap, which means that they could be fighting their way through the field. And Ferrari look fast, but they so far are very hard on their tyres. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.